And what do they tell you in churchianity in the Roman Catholic Church? Well, here we have that serpent. See the serpent? It's wrapped around the tree of life, the tree, okay? And then there's a picture of Eve. And there's a picture of Adam. And down here is the apple. And Eve's holding the apple and he's telling Adam, Adam, go ahead and eat the apple. I ate some of the apple and it was good. Well, number one, how do we even know then that there was an apple tree in that area? How do we know it wasn't a fig tree? <clears throat> a pear tree? Could have been a plum tree. You know what I think? Here's what I personally think, and I'm going to prove it to you. I think it was a pear on the ground. Let's get into it. When we go to the historical book of Genesis of our race, because it says in chapter 5, verse 1, this is the book of the generations of Adam. <clears throat> it actually meant this is the book of the Guinea, the race, the Guinea, generation Guinea race. This is the book of the race of Adam. That's what these 66 books plus other ones are all about. All right. It's not about the Chinese. It's really not about who you call Jews today. It's not about the Orientals, Eskimos, uh, uh, Black Somalians, or anything else. It's about who you call the white race today on the earth. <clears throat> it says in chapter 3, verses 1 to 24. Now follow along with me. I hope you put it, put your player on pause if you have to. Get your notebook and pen out. Get a, get a cup of coffee, a large glass of water, or whatever else. Because we're going into some very, very strong information today. To take away the myth, the myths, and the superstition of the voodoo churches out here. Christian, uh, uh, what would we call them? Uh, Judeo-Christians and the Baptists and the Mormons and, and all these other churches made of wood, stone, or clay, okay? The real church of Yahweh, the Christ Emmanuel, is his people who are his progeny offspring, flesh of flesh, bone of bone, blood of blood, and spirit of spirit. Let's enter into this discussion today. I hope you really like it. Verse 1. Now the serpent, now we remember Revelations 12, but now the serpent, also called the dragon, the wicked one, or Satan, was more subtle, was more cunning and prudent, crafty, than any beast of the field which Yahweh had made. And this serpent, the dragon or wicked one, said unto the woman Eve, Yea, as Yahweh said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Verse 2. And the woman Eve said unto the serpent, the dragon, Satan, the devil, we may eat of the fruit of of the trees of the garden. Oh, what oh, fruit, fruit trees. Uh, what could a fruit tree be? Oh, a coconut tree, a banana tree, a plum tree. Oh, yeah, okay. An apple tree. Uh, oh, okay, the fruit of the tree, okay, of the garden. Now follow with me because the translators really booger this up. So what I'm going to be teaching and sharing with you today wouldn't be understood. All right, here we go. <clears throat> but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Yahweh has said, you shall not eat. Now that word eat in the Hebrew is a call. It doesn't mean what you say in English. In the Hebrew, it's a call. You shall not eat a call of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent, that dragon and wicked one, Satan and the serpent, said unto the woman Eve, You shall not 
surely die. He added one word, not surely die. Verse 5. For Yahweh does know that in the day that you eat, you are call in Hebrew, and now I'm going to expand it more for you, that you eat in Hebrew, that you are call or lay. The English word eat in Genesis comes from the Hebrew word akal, which means to lay with. In the day that you lay, therefore, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Well, remember, after the sixth day therein, everything was good, if you recall reading it. And now Satan has thrown in, if you lay, if you eat a call with me, you are not only good, but then you're going to know evil too. Verse 6, And when the woman Eve saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, oh, you know, because, you know, Satan wasn't very, was not an ugly individual, and Eve said, Oh, what a hunk. Oh, man, I think this guy is really a good-looking dude, you know? Okay? A desire in her eyes. All right, let's continue here. She took of that fruit, or the seed thereof, and did a call, did lay with, and gave also unto her husband Adam with her, and he did a call, and he laid with Lilith, the mistress of Satan, the dragon, and the wicked one. There was no apple. That is all churchianity BS that's been crammed down the throats and into the minds of our race. Continuing. Verse 7. And the eyes of both of them were open. That's even Adam. And they knew that they were now naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves ap aprons because they covered their nakedness. And the aprons are as symbolic of the Freemasons today covering their private parts with their little aprons. And they think they're so wonderfully into a higher degree of intelligence, all right? Verse 8. And they, Adam and Eve, heard the voice of Yahweh walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife Eve hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh among the trees of the garden. Verse 9, as if Yahweh didn't know where they were, right? <laughs> okay. And Yahweh called unto Adam and said unto him, Oh, where are you, Adam? Where are you? Like he didn't know, okay? Verse 10, And he, Adam, said, I heard thy voice in the garden, Yahweh, and I was afraid. In other words, afraid to see Yahweh. Because I was naked and I hid myself. 11. And Yahweh said, Who told you that you were naked? Hast thou eaten? Hast thou a called laid with of that tree? The tree is an entity. Whereof I commanded thee that thou should not Lay with a call, eat a call, lay with. Twelve. And the man Adam said, The woman Eve whom thou gavest to be with me, she Eve gave me of the tree Lilith, and I did eat a call and laid with Lilith. Oh, now we're taking a whole different context here, aren't we? You know, I always wondered, one of the punishments for Eve doing this was to give have pain and suffering in giving childbirth. And I thought to myself, self, well, why wasn't the punishment if she ate an apple, why didn't her teeth fall out? But let's get into this because you're learning the real truth of what happened in that garden with Satan and even Adam. And how everyone took the word eat in its English context, which was not Aramaic or Hebrew in understanding. Now, 
verse 13. And Yahweh said unto the woman Eve, What is this that thou, Eve, hast done? He wasn't happy at all. And the woman Eve said, The serpent, or the dragon, or the wicked one, beguiled me. Oh, there's that English word beguiled, but what does it mean in Hebrew? The serpent, Nasha, seduced me, and I did eat. I did a call. I did lay with. Whoa, let's go over that again. Very powerful. Very, very powerful. Here we go. Yahweh said to the woman Eve, What is this that thou hast done? It was against what he told them to do. And the woman Eve said, The serpent, the dragon, Satan, the wicked one, beguiled, the English beguiled, but the word beguiled in the Hebrew is nasha, meaning seduced me. The serpent seduced me, and I did eat, I did a call, and lay with him. Well, isn't that interesting? Now, I don't want to bore you because you probably heard this in your churches and from the Roman Catholic priest and Judeo-Christianity. No, you didn't hear it. But you're hearing it right here. Right here, you're hearing it off this podium. Off this podium. Because it, it's your right to know and understand what has happened. We are going back into lost ancient history of our race. Stay with me because this, this is a very, very powerful educational presentation. Very powerful. One of the most powerful that you're going to get that you need to put many pieces together to take confusion away from you. Let's continue. Verse 14. And Yahweh God said unto... The serpent, or the dragon, or the wicked one, or the devil, because you, now see, because you, physical entity, he was that tree, has done this. You, Satan, or the dragon, are cursed above all and above every beast of the field. The beast of the field, including the Enosh Shivya which are the other two-legged beings as referenced to in the book of Jonah that had hands and feet and wore sacks cloth and cried out to Yahweh. They're very simple now, but we're getting into a, a lot of depth here, all right? We're going beyond Esau Edom today. Okay. And upon thy belly shall thou go, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. Because then Satan's children, the serpent's children, all right, they're not, they're going to be, or have a curse put on them that they won't be able to grow their own food. That they're going to be eating dust all the days of thy life. That's why they have taken over your commodities market in Chicago. And their banks have taken over the farms that grow the food. Remember, food control is people control. Let's continue. Verse 15. And I, Yahweh, will put enmity, hate. Enmity is hate. Between thee, Satan, the dragon, the wicked one, go to St. John 8, 31, verse 31, verse 44, verse 47. I will put hate between thee, Satan, and the woman, or the racial bride of Israel, the man's offspring. This is the descendants of Adam through our family tree of Luke 3.38. The man's offspring and between thy, Satan the dragon wicked one seed offspring and her seed and it, the bride's children of Israel the man, the pure white European men, women and children and nations, shall bruise thy satanic gracious offspring and you, Satan, shall bruise his heel, or the heel of the white race, which is the Achilles tendon of the heel. They have sorely wounded us by taking over the money system and our education system and everything else. But we shall crush the head of the serpent. 
in the end time. Let's continue. Verse 16. And unto the woman Eve, he, Yahweh, said, I, Yahweh, will greatly multiply thy sorrow and your conception, or racial birth pain, in sorrow, or hurting and suffering. Thou shalt bring forth children into Yahweh's third dimension, and thy Eve's desire shall be to thy husband, Adam, and Adam, he, the husband, the male, the man, shall rule over thee racially which has never been lifted by Yahweh the Christ Emmanuel the man is the head of the household but the man is to respect his wife he's not to beat his wife and treat her like a rug and step all over her All right, but the man is the head of the household continuing verse 17 and unto Adam he Yahweh said because you hearkened unto the voice of your wife Eve, and you have eaten, you have a called, you laid with, of that tree, Lilith, of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat, you shall not lay of it with Lilith. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. And in sorrow shall you eat, meaning eat for nourishment now, of it all the days of your life. That was a curse. They were sentenced that. They were punished. Judgment was put on them for that. Eve was that she would spare the pain and the suffering for what she did for sexual intercourse with the dragon. An entity, thou, he, he always said he's a person, thou, you, Satan. I'm getting into some tight stuff here. All right? Don't go away. Don't shut this presentation off. All right? It's going to change your life very, very dramatically. Let's continue now. Verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring to you. He's talking to Adam. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And in the sweat of thy face, Adam, you shall eat bread. Till you return unto the ground, for out of it were you taken. In other words, water, fire, earth, and air equals the third dimension, molecular elements. For dust, earthly container substance you are, and unto dust, earthly container substance in which you dwell, shall you return. Verse 20, And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was... <clears throat> The mother of all living. Now you see, don't let that fool you. All living. All living of who? Only Yahweh's pure DNA spirit beings via Adam and Eve of our racial family tree of the book of Luke chapter 3 verse 38 that told you Adam was the son of Yahweh God. Not the Enosh. Not the Shivya Mamzer bastards mixed blood beings nor Satan's wicked ones or the seed offspring on the earth today again recorded in John chapter 8 31 verse 31 44 and 47 where he said to the Jews you are the children of Satan and the devil himself now <clears throat> verse 21 unto Adam also and to his wife Eve did Yahweh God make coats or body covering of skins, and he clothed them? Verse 22, And Yahweh said, Behold, the man, Adam, is become as one of us. Plural. Father Yahweh is talking now with other angelic beings. Adam has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest Adam put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, or a call, lay with Eve, and live, or breed racially pure forever. Father Yahweh told Eve, don't you lay with Satan. Don't you a call. Because you will have bastard children. And Adam and Eve, their pure bloodline would never exist on the earth. They'd be all high-bred bastards. They wouldn't be pure. That's why Satan went after Eve to pollute her womb. 
because not to have any pure offspring come onto the earth to challenge Satan, the dragon, the wicked one's dominion. That's what this is about. And it's still about that today. It's a race war. And the Jews, as Yahweh Emmanuel the Christ in the flesh said to the Jews in John 8, 44, you are your father the devil and the works of your father you do. And in John 8, 47 he said, why don't you understand my words and my speech? Because you Jews are not of Yahweh God, you're not of me, he said. I'm differentiating here and bringing forth subject matter that hasn't been taught in a long time to our race. Let me continue. 